What's up, y'all? It's Patrick. In today's practice, we're going to go through a nice morning stretch into a gentle flow to help you kind of start your day uh, feeling really good. So let's start off standing because that's probably the first thing that you would do in the morning. And if you have a blanket and a block, that may be helpful for the stretching portion. Um, but again, don't really feel one way or another about it. And as you find your standing position, if you want to have your big toes on the floor but your heels slightly lifted, feel free. So again, the heels can be on the blanket and then your big toes can be on the floor. And then I just want you to roll side to side. So of course the blanket is folded. I should have probably said that in the beginning, but it is what it is. You get the gist of it here. And then from this place, just gently sway the shoulders around a little bit. Allow yourself to be really simple or steady or calm with the movements that you're doing of waking up your process. Nothing is really right or wrong here. You can begin to roll and wave your shoulders. Kind of feel as though you're loosening up some of the cobwebs in the body. And the nice thing about standing on the blanket here is you can push the inner arches into the blanket and that little bit of stiffness will kind of help you release some of the tension there. Allow yourself to breathe a bit more. Try to tap into inhales and exhales. Just a few more moments here, waking up through the bottoms of the feet. Very nice. And then as you finish there, notice how the feet hopefully feel a little bit better. You're going to take your blanket. You can roll it up if you want. Or you can fold it a few times. And what you're going to do is put the blanket into the backs of the knees and you're going to sit back towards your heels here. So a nice lifted position. If this is too much for you, you can always put the block in between your heels too. So the bum lands on the block and the, you know, the hinge at the knee essentially still grabs the blanket. Hopefully this helps you release some of the tension in the calves here. This doesn't need to be that intense. It's part of the reason that we're using a blanket and not a more firm object is that we're not necessarily trying to really drill down into the legs too much. All we want is the opportunity to sit up nice and tall and help release some general tension from sleeping. You can close your eyes here if you want. Take a few more breaths. Feel nice and tall, nice and upright, nice and lifted. And also feel free here to lean to the left and lean to the right. So you're playing some of that gentle energy that we started out the practice with. No, so you can sway slowly from right to left, really digging into the hamstrings and the calves in a nice, I guess a nice way is really all you won't really need to say about it. Is that you're not, tr all you really want to begin to understand is you're not necessarily pushing the envelope. You're more just beginning to play the instrument, right? You're warming up the chords, warming up the octaves, the scales. As you finish there, lean forward, place your hands on the ground, and take a few rounds of cat-cow. So inhale, open the chest, lean out and forward, and exhale, round into your upper back, mid-back and lower back. Inhale, lean out. And if this is too much for your wrists, you can always take the hand slightly forward of the shoulders. Use your breath to create the rhythm to going from place to place.
as you return to center, grab the blanket that's behind the feet. And then we're going to sit on it. So you can have it folded maybe once over. But again, you don't have to really have it folded at all. If, you wouldn't, if that's not part of your practice, part of your reality. I know this, this journey is feeling very open-ended, but warming up and starting the day is also a very open-ended process. And so you want to be able to modulate it. Some days you may feel like sitting on the blanket, some days not. Um, I like the blanket because it helps me lift my seat. So if you feel like you're sitting back or you're rounding your spine, Use the blanket to help you unfurl and open up a bit more. Go ahead and cross the left shin in front of the right, and then walk your hands forward. And when you feel the limit to as far forward as you can go, walk the hands over to the right and the left side, respectively. And so you can just continue this journey as much as possible. The only constant are your sit bones. You want to keep them grounded. And if you find something interesting, linger there. So you're just slowly moving space to space. Maybe you find something interesting on the right side. One thing that you could do is plant the right hand, reach the left arm up and over, and just kind of use the left shoulder as a driver to move some energy through your sideways side body. And then when you kind of feel good enough with that movement, you can begin to venture back over to the other side. And again, take the same course of action here. And go ahead and return to center. When you feel balance going to the left and the right, let's take a few moments lingering forward. Maybe you drop the chest down a little bit more. Let the shins get heavier. Let the heart lean out just a bit. And then inhale, go ahead and rise up and switch your side. So the left shin will go back, the right shin will unearth itself and come to the forefront of the position. And notice the difference between your right and your left side. So maybe you're walking the hands forward here and you notice there's not as much space. It's okay. That's information for us. That's giving us a little bit of feedback. And notice how nothing in our practice here is necessarily still. Go ahead and begin to walk the hands over to the right and the left side, respectively. But nothing is also moving with a real level of aggression or attachment. It's just kind of being interested in your own positions, lingering in the spaces that feel good. Right? You want to nourish your body to start the day. I think one of the things that I've tried to remind myself of a lot recently is how much I ask of myself versus how much I give to myself. And of course, when you're giving yourself time to work on your yoga practice, again, that's you giving to yourself. But I really mean like, what are you requesting of your body versus how often are you giving your body kind of what it's looking for, what it's asking for? And maybe that's rest and maybe that's intensity, but Little practices like this where you're not necessarily being tied to aesthetic or form, you're just kind of being exploratory in your space, that gives you information. Your body will begin to lean one way or another. You'll begin to feel into various nooks and crannies that have been neglected subconsciously for whatever reason in your movement practice. And just as the first side when you feel balanced, walking the hands to the right and to the left, come to the middle and just breathe here. A few more breaths.
Amazing work. Go ahead and rise up. And then from here, come back onto your hands and knees. And as you get here, where we'll want to work is placing the palms down flat and then pushing the left knee down, potentially left shin, left toes. Lift the right knee directly out to the right side. So you're just kind of waking up this movement. You'll get a little bit of core engagement here too, but we want to find the ability to lift the right knee up out to the side. Challenge that range. You can try to keep the right hip square to the floor and then lift up. That's kind of a nice thing to do. Feel as though you're segmenting the movement. So lift the right knee up, hit the wall, and then peel up from there back down. We'll take about three more. Hit the wall, lift up, back down, hit the wall, lift up, back down, hit the wall, lift up, back down, hit the wall, lift up, hold, lower back down. Switch your side, pushing into the palms, and again, working the same activity on the left. So first start by lifting the left knee a few times so you're feeling your ability to, your ability to elevate, and then you want to try and keep the hips square to the floor, lift the left knee, hit the wall, hold there for a moment, and then lift the hip higher. Roll down, hit the wall, lift up, back 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 down, last one, hit the wall, lift up, back down. Hopefully you notice a lot of engagement in the core, a lot of engagement through the glutes, helping set up your posture. Come back into hands and knees. If you left there for a moment, once both knees find the floor, then we'll do a little bit more work in the right side. So push the palms down flat, lift the right knee directly out to the side. Again, hit the wall, lift up, back down. We'll take a few of these to warm up. Hit the wall, lift up, back down. Hit the wall, lift up, back down. Hit the wall, lift up back down. This time hit the wall, lift up, hold, and then feel internal rotation through the upper leg bone. So as if you're spinning your inner knee, inner arch of the foot forward, M <laughs> there might not be much change there. Um, it's very physically challenging, but hopefully you're feeling the movement through the leg. And then reverse, go internal rotation. So you're spinning the inner leg down towards the floor, right? Holding here. Outer ankle lifts towards the sky for five, four, three, two, one. External rotation, spin inner arch of foot towards back of wrist. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift inner ankle up. Five, four, three, two, one. Return to center. All of a sudden, a little bit more active. We'll take the left side here really quickly. So getting back into that warm-up space, squaring off the hips, pushing into the palms. And again, you could do this with your fists on the floor. Nothing says the hands have to be any one way, shape, or form. Lift the left knee up, hit the wall, and then lift the left hip higher, back down. Left knee lifts, hit the wall, lift up, back down. Left knee lifts, hit the wall, lift up, back down. Left knee lifts, hit the wall, lift up back down, lift, hit the wall, lift higher, back down, and then lift, hit the wall, lift up, and then we go right into external rotation first. So try and spin the inner foot towards the left hand, try and keep the shoulder stable, lift, lift, spin, five, four, this is hard as it's gonna be today, I promise, three, two, one, lift outer ankle up, five, four, three, two, one, inner ankle or towards wrist, five, four, three, two, one, outer ankle towards ceiling, five, four, three, two, one, oh my goodness, release, nice job, sit back on the toes, or on the heels, toes tucked or untucked, excuse me, and then just take a few circles through the arms. 
Go at a nice, gentle, general pace here. Feeling ease to the energetic sway. Whatever direction you're currently going in, let's change that up. So if you were going back stroke, come forward stroke or rest stroke, I guess. And really try and move the shoulder blades here. Try and let the shoulders do a lot of moving and everything else do a lot of stabilizing. As you finish there, roll the shoulder, shake out the arms a little bit, and then take your blanket with that one fold, drop your heels on, and then allow yourself to fold over the legs here. So the intensity of the heel lift is entirely up to you. We just want it to be present, right? So of course you're present in the moment, but this heel lift needs to be present in the position. You could also, if you don't have a mat, of course, just roll up uh, or if you don't have a blanket, excuse me, you can always just roll up the back of your mat a few times. All right, so it can just be a nice little platform for your heels to lift and your upper body to feel a nice deep fold over the shins. You can have opposite hand catch, opposite elbow here. Taking space for your fold. Feel the hips lifting a little bit higher. Feel the forearms sinking down a little bit deeper. And exhale, release. Rise onto the toes to slide the blanket off to the side. Then from here, walk out towards your downward facing dog. Pedal out the feet a few times. This will be the only dog we take today, and again, it's not really going to be a very long one, so just allow yourself to pedal out the legs. Hopefully, you feel really good through the hips and through the upper body. And then I want you to step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. From here, you're going to roll to the outer edge of both feet. Twist and reach your right hand up to the sky. Take an inhale. On the exhale, bring your right hand down to the floor. As you drop the right big toe, you're going to walk your hands towards your back left foot, skandhasana. And even if you can take this position without the hands, for the beginning of this, use the hands as much as possible. Then walk back forward. Right, be really mindful, and again, don't have to put too much weight into the hands. And take that revolving side plank action again. So inhale, open up. Inhale here in the twisted side plank. And then on your exhale, walk the hands back towards the front left foot. And this is our little flowing action. So I just want it to be as mindful and as purposeful as possible. All right? So you're just journeying to the front of the mat, rolling to the outer edges of both feet. Inhale to open the heart. Reach through the right hand as much as possible. Maybe linger there. On the exhale, walk the hands back towards the left foot, straightening the right leg to the best of your ability, sitting into your left knee, lifting your inner left arch, and then walking forward. Find this little swaying of energy in your body, and do your best to connect it with your own breathing pattern. Last round here on this side. Open up. Stretch the right hand as far back behind you as possible. And then meander over to the back left leg into your variation of Skandasana. Just wiggling yourself into that space. Holding where you are.
And then walk your hands towards your front right foot. Push into the palms. Bounce the left knee up and down a few times. And then step back into your downward facing dog. Bend the knees, feel some shake through the legs, and we'll do the same activity on side two. So step the left foot to the outside of the left hand, and then roll to the outer edge of both feet. Inhale, reach the left arm up. And exhale, mosey across towards your back right foot for skandhasana. And you want to be mindful of your inner arches here. So walk towards your front left foot. Try to not let them collapse. Inhale, roll to the outer edge of the feet. Stretch up through the left arm. Create your space. Exhale, walk all the way back to your right foot. And again, the more comfortable you get, the deeper you can sit down into the position. But you're not rushing any of this stuff. You're just using these poses and this little sequence to help you feel good, right? This could be a nice warm-up for a full practice. could be a nice warm-up before a busy day, right? It could be a nice warm-up before playing with your kids. There's all these different things that you can begin to explore here that aren't necessarily tied to bigger postures, right? Because we're not even seeking the biggest space possible here. You could easily flow uh, through your skandhasana here, right? And then whip towards the top of the mat. But that's not directly the journey we are on today. Not all days need to be pushing your limit. They, of course, can be if that's your interest, but they don't have to be. And that's the beauty of this practice. You're just trying to find something that feels gentle, something that feels nice, something that feels available. On this last round here, let's linger. Roll to the outer edge of both feet. Really stretch the left arm overhead. Breathe into the left lung. Peel open more. And then swivel all the way around your skandhasana, which is again the one we will pause in. Try to keep the inner arch lifted. Root down through the right heel. Lifted spine, longest shape. Mosey your hands back towards your front foot. Place the palms down at the top of the mat. Feel rooted into the hands. Bounce the right knee five times. So it taps and extends to... Three, four, five, and then step the right foot up to meet the left. From here, sit all the way to the floor. Again, you can grab your blanket. To do so, come into your variation of seated straddle and fold to the middle. And let yourself just drop down here. Find a softer place, a lighter place, a more gentle place of being. See if you can just pull your heels towards your hips so you feel like you're actively taking yourself into the stretch. Spilling your front hip points forward. And if you can, you can drop your forehead down onto your hands. And this is really the deepest stretch that will hold to close the practice today. And I hope you feel nice. Right? I hope you feel a bit more prepared to take on whatever you have in front of you today. Feel a bit more active, aware, alert through the feet, through the legs, helping you interact with the world in a bit more of a purposeful and kind manner. As always, thank you so much for joining me for these practices. I hope to share space with you again soon. Have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.